I'm excited. Okay, hi everyone, welcome to this vlog. You know from the title what it is, and I have an exciting package. I'm pretty sure this is the Burning God because that's the only thing I've bought from Indigo recently. But I'm excited. <laughs> but I'm also like in the middle of so many things. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Oh. Oh, why does it feel weird? It feels almost like a board book. I think because it was packed in that way. I don't know. <laughs> it's in my hands. I'm so excited. Look who it is. Ah! I'm fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Huh. How long is it? 600 pages? I think I'm going to start reading this tomorrow. You will see my thoughts as I read this, but I promise I will keep it spoiler free. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna make this too long just because I have nothing to say. I just wanted to say that I own the Burning God now, which is very exciting. I'm almost done with the audiobook I'm currently listening to. In all honesty, I might just not finish it and just start Burning God because I'm so interested to know what happens. I feel like everyone knows what the Burning God is, but if you don't, it's the last book in the Poppy War trilogy. I feel like this book is definitely going to destroy my soul, so I have to mentally prepare myself, but I'm so excited and I'm glad I get to take you on this journey with me so yeah I will talk to you guys when I have an update and hopefully Rhythm of War gets here soon as well because it also comes out tomorrow so fingers crossed it gets here in time because I'm so hyped okay okay cool cool bye hi I'm on the floor again but it's a different day I'm probably even wearing the same cardigan but I promise it's a different day it's the 18th so it's the day after the burning god and rhythm of war were meant to come out and um I still don't have my copy of rhythm of war and it says it should be delivered today but also my copy has been chilling in Brampton for the last day so I don't know what's going on with that and if I don't get my copy this vlog is going to like forget this vlog I just want to read rhythm of war so bad like you don't understand the FOMO I feel right now this is such just such a first world problem i'm gonna shut up but i do want to give you an update on the burning god because i am 100 pages into it about there and so far nothing about this book has surprised me because like i have a pretty good understanding of rin's character and where it was going i feel like there are some things that she does that i'm very surprised by but there are just some parts of her personality that are like clockwork and one of these things is that rin is very much a follower in this book she's trying to be a general but like i feel like she's most comfortable taking orders from people which I mean it's fine it's interesting to get the perspective of a foot soldier or of just a soldier instead of someone at a higher rank but she's also one of her kind so that just makes her so unique and that just makes her so powerful so it's the whole concept of someone being in a position of power but not exactly knowing what they're doing yeah I've made it pretty obvious that Rin is my favorite character and like even though I don't personally like her I still love following her I think she's such an interesting character to follow we've been introduced to a new character and I just really really love him like I love him the interactions he has with Rin are just so epic they're always just butting heads and he just is not scared of her no matter what she does and I'm just like like, I'm living for it and I know it's not gonna last because it's the burning god. So far this book has gone in the direction that I expected. Look at how many tabs I already have in here. I'm really enjoying it and I wish I could binge this and I wish I could binge The Rhythm of War but this is probably my most jam-packed week of assignments and stuff so like <laughs> love that for me. Anyway I don't know if I have anything else to say just about yet but things just got really interesting so I'm curious to know what is going to happen next. And hopefully in my next update, I will have Rhythm of War because I just want it. I just want to read it. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, I'm gonna go and I will see you guys in my next clip. Bye! Hello! Don't mind the shadows, it's really late. It's actually not that late, it's maybe 6 o'clock. But because of daylight savings, it uh, gets dark at like 4, so... But... I wonder what this is. Look at how big it is. I'm stressed. I actually got fed up of waiting and I started reading another book. I started reading Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, which is my book club's pick for this month. So I wanted to get a head start on it. But um, literally I got 20 pages in and this book came in the mail. So like, I'm still going to read it. I think I'm gonna read them simultaneously just because I need to read that for my book club and I like it already. It's so messy. <laughs> oh, this is my first Stormlight hardcover. I have all the other ones in paperback and it's so heavy. And it's purple. Oh, and it has like this. Oh, cool, 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 cool. There's a map. Oh, art, 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 art. 
hard. I need to stop freaking out. Um, I just need to get a start on this ASAP because like I said, the FOMO is actually real. So I need to know what's going on. I'm so excited. Now the vlog can start for real. But yeah, I haven't read much more of The Burning God since I updated you in the morning. I'm in the middle of four things. So hopefully I can make time because this week is like pretty stressful work-wise. I have a lot of assignments to do. So I guess I'll be giving up on sleep. But also, I think maybe videos I've not edited quite a bit. So I might skip and upload here and there. But yeah, that's this update. I'm so excited. Bye! and welcome to an update we're gonna ignore my crazy hair i braided it while it was <laughs> wet yesterday and it's uh it's a mess so we're not gonna talk about it as you can tell from these lovely dust jackets right here i'm in the middle of three things who let me do this like who let me read all three of these books at the same time first of all this is the first time in a while that i'm enjoying every single thing i'm reading but like look at the books like who's surprised let's talk about the burning god because i am 220 pages into it like right over there and i am just loving it so much i don't know if i like this more than the dragon republic see the thing is that they're all so different that i like different aspects of each book like i loved reading about Synagard in book one and in book two i just loved the things i loved are a spoiler but um in book two i just loved how she took everything that was so large scale in book one and kind of just tamped it down and i just love how she slowed things down and let things progress and so when we reached the end and there was like this huge crescendo moment you were just not ready for it because like the poppy war where it's like fast 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 the dragon republic kind of gave you this false security almost until the very end that just destroyed your soul this book i am i'd say one third of the way through and here's the amount of tabs i have in here like this is insane <laughs> But I'm just liking it so much. I don't think I'm surprised in the general direction that it's taking. And I'm not surprised at Rin's growth. I mean, like, there isn't really growth. But, like, I like that Rin is who she is. Even if, like, she's not my favorite character. I do really enjoy following her. Can I just say that I'm really, really enjoying a certain empress in this book? I genuinely don't think I had any kind of apathy or any kind of feelings towards her in the first two books. But in this one, I'm just like okay go off and i really like it i'm one of my favorite characters from book one is back now i don't know if i talked about this in in the previous clip but there was this one this new character that was introduced and that just crashed and burned so quick <laughs> it just well who's surprised like she really just gives you like one moment to be like oh this is cute this is in like this mundane situation where like these two characters can just interact and then she just like sets it all on fire okay so if you've read dragon republic you know what happens at the end this huge big betrayal that happens at the end and those characters have met again and it was literally <laughs> so filmy like and i just enjoyed it it was like large scale like so dramatic because that character he's not my favorite but i know like a lot of people love him he's just so freaking dramatic and he just like his entrance was like everything i was so i was enjoying myself but i had like two ways in which their first interaction after that betrayal would go and i was just like pleasantly surprised with the way it went but also i knew rin was going to do something like that i genuinely ha i knew that something was going to happen and then she wouldn't do something it, it was pretty obvious because she does have a soft spot for that person i'm trying to be really awake because this is spoiler free but anyway yeah so like now rin is with the two characters that i really love our girl gets betrayed like left and right like i feel like this is that thing with rin it's so cyclical because she just can't catch a break because it just goes to show that there aren't any good people in this world because she's just being betrayed left and right she can trust nobody in any other situation i feel like at this point the main character would stop trusting all 
all together even maybe like after the second time she got betrayed but Rina's very much I feel like a follower she's very much a foot soldier like I said before even if she has these rare powers I don't think she's very good at commanding I don't think she knows what exactly she's doing which is why I feel like she gets betrayed left and right because she needs someone to follow and I think with the two people she's traveling with now she has that and I don't know I feel like she's at a safer space now so I'm so hyped to see what happens next I'm trying to go a little slower with this because I don't want to finish this and then just read Rhythm of War but I'm loving it so much so I just want to keep reading but also Rhythm of War is like twice the size of Burning God so like it's that's the way it's gonna go I sectioned off Rhythm of War into 150 page chunks and I am just past the first chunk if you can tell it just literally okay my hand first of all my hand hurts from holding this up but literally it looks like I've read 10 pages if this was any other book I mean, this is what's gonna break my arm but okay, look at this and look at that like are you telling me that looks the same and one is 50 pages and one is 150 pages but we're making our way through it so far i remember some of these from the chapters that were released early i read the first few and then i kind of gave up because i was like i don't like reading periodicals i i want to read it all together so i started from the start again and i'm so invested in kaladin's story like i'm only invested in kaladin's story at this point i like the other characters but i'm super invested in kaladin one thing i've noticed so far i'm 150 pages in and we still haven't gotten a flashback which is like a staple for these books like each book kind of does a deep dive into a certain character's backstory and, and this book is Eshenai and Benli um, and we still haven't gotten any of those flashbacks which I'm really excited for because they're part of the enemy and I want to know more about what's going on because we've had Venli's and Eshenai's points of view in the interludes before and especially with Eshenai's past I just want to know how she got from point A to point B I just love exploring characters pasts like that so I'm really excited for that Galinar is not my favorite character and I've seen that I just read between him and Kaladin literally it made me so mad even though I get like the I get what he's trying to do but I also just feel like it's just not gonna go the way he thinks he's going to go it, he's trying to help but I just don't think it's going to have that effect but yeah I'm super invested in Kaladin I'm not that invested in Shalan and Adolin's relationship I'm really invested in Shalan as a character and what she's going through Shalan has so much to figure out and I feel like her stress over keeping secrets from Adolin and her stress over not being completely open because of who she is in her past is putting added stress on her so I just feel like they don't need to be together right away like I don't know but I like Shalan's storyline so far a lot has happened in 150 pages and I know Navani is a big POV in this book so I'm really excited for her perspectives as well I'm just killing and Tammy's sprints that she's doing and yeah I'm going to hopefully get some more work done because I have so much work tomorrow and I generally shouldn't be reading but I just need to I need to I, I need to have like a reward for all the work I do basically so I'm gonna go that's the update for now and I will see you guys in in the next clip bye oh why hello there let me oh this book is so heavy every time i pick it up i regret life anyway let's talk about updates it has been a long time it's monday the 23rd and at this point i've acknowledged that i might not finish with them before the before the end of the month just because i need to prioritize black sun i left it for the end and now i'm just like I'm screwed if I don't read it before the 30th, which is when our live show on it is on Sophia's channel. But it's fine. It's fine. Whatever. I don't want to rush it anyway. Let's talk about the Burning God first. I am... Oh, wait. No. I've listened to more of the audiobook. Okay, I'm almost at page 400. I'm right over here. So that's two-thirds of the way, I think. Is it? A little less, maybe. What the fuck is this book? I'm... I... I... I'm baffled. I I don't even know what I said the last time I talked to you guys about it, but the second half got even better. And I, uh, okay. Mm, Rin just pisses me off so much. It's great. So, um, Rin. I just honestly cannot get over Rin as a character. I mean, I get she's probably realistic, but it just, I'm so mad at her all the time. Like, it's like a full-time job being mad at Rin, but also like, uh, it's fine. It's fine. She makes the same mistake 50 times in like different ways. I just, I, I just genuinely don't understand because she really said yes this person is a monster but let me do this anyway so she does the thing and the person is a monster and when he does monstrous things she's like oh shit this guy's a monster Rin I don't understand you I don't understand how you can be like this ma'am I'm calm I am the picture of serenity this book is deep breaths it's fine let's move past Rin I really love like that every book does something different and explores the world in a different way the first book was focused mostly on the Mukhanis and their battle with the Mukhanis the second book focused on the Hesperians and this book kind of elaborates on that they travel to the city that's kind of occupied by the Hesperians it just gives you such like 
literally gives you call it's colonization so she discusses colonization in such an interesting manner i think as well because at least these people aren't dying but they're also being treated like dirt and basically being treated like animals in their own city and the way that architecture that has stood the test of time for years and years was demolished in like weeks to build more modern more federation architecture the way their history their culture is just like easily removed it's just done in such an interesting way i do think that the part that i talked about the monster and Rin literally not having even half a brain cell i just felt like that part that i just i'm just i just finished reading that section it's the end of part two i'm just at the start of part three i just feel like that part was a little too convenient that all those elements were there at the same time and then it just like worked out in their favor i don't know but other than that i just don't have any complaints i'm other than Rin. Rin, i love that she was written this way don't get me wrong but that doesn't mean i don't feel any less annoyed at her all the freaking time like chagan really deserves to be paid money every time he tells her not to do something she does it anyway and he was right all along like literally that boy needs to get compensation that's all i'm saying even though he pisses me the hell off too like <laughs> these characters are so unlikable but that's the whole point they're not supposed to be likable characters they're not supposed to be heroes but you're still like <laughs> morbidly almost like uncomfortably rooting for them and it's just it's a plus i love that we got more of the trifectas background they've just been this looming figure for like two and a half books and we finally get to explore them more in this one i just feel like that was also very convenient the way that storyline concluded it's the same scene where all that it just felt a little convenient to me but anyway um i love that we're not getting too much nisha because he's not my favorite character is it just me am i just weird or do i like their interactions more when they dislike each other compared to when they're working on the same side i don't know but what can we say i didn't come here for a love story so that's just me can we just talk about the random cannibalism that was just thrown into this book i was not expecting it it's probably realistic but that should be a trigger warning so I'm, that's why i'm telling you that there is cannibalism in this book but yeah that, that i was not expecting that and that just like showed up out of the blue and i was like oh 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 i think that's everything i want to talk about in this update at this point i'm just mad at rin i'm mad at the trifecta but i'm also like they just really did something where they knew that it could only end one way but they did it anyway and now they're just like regretting everything and i was just like if you had a single brain cell you would know not to do this but you did this for no reason at all like i just uh okay we're gonna move on i'm really excited for part three because part three of arf kwang's books always slap the hardest okay so i can't wait to uh be absolutely destroyed can't wait for all my faves to die i'm calling it now again this is me my prediction i'm not going to tell you if it comes true but if you read the book you will i guess know if i'm right or wrong i'm calling it now i think Rin and by extension Kitei will die i think venka will die unfortunately i don't think nisha will die honestly i kind of want him to die but i don't think he'll die that's my update for this for now and hopefully i will get back to you when i'm i won't say when i'm done with this book but also like let's see when the next update is i really planned my updates based on rhythm of war so it just depends on how much of the burning god i get read but i do want to finish it in the next few days because i just really need to know what's going on and i haven't been listening to audiobooks a lot just simply because i'm not leaving my house we're back on lockdown here in Toronto so I'm not leaving my house. I am on page 320 so like I've read about 200 pages since we last talked and I don't know what to talk about with this book. Um, I'm like you know what let's just get Dalinar out of the way. Dalinar has never been my favorite character. I feel like in books one and two his perspective was like always my least favorite and then everyone said in book three that you would really understand Dalinar more and I guess sure but like there just have always been this element to him like this righteous pretentious element to him that i just have never liked and you really get to see it in this book like he's not holding back at all some of the things um you can tell there's a rift beginning to form between adolin and dalinar and i'm so glad adolin just like become your own person because adolin has been dalinar's son and dalinar's heir for his entire life like that is basically who he is that is basically the way people treat him and at this point i would be sick of it too 300 pages in and there hasn't been a single flashback which i'm just is so strange but yeah i'm really liking the story in the present so i'm not gonna complain we get a lot of navani's point of view and i'm really excited for that because again navani's always just been dalinar's wife i've always been interested in her character because she's very sciencey she's always been interested in the fabrials and like the mechanisms of those fabrials in this world and she's finally getting to explore that hopefully without dalinar because <gasps> 
the relationship is so cringe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just I don't need to see two 50 year olds flirting. Thank you. No, no <laughs> I literally had to pause the audiobook when we got to one of those scenes and I was like, okay I'm gonna skip this and move to the next chapter because no, let's just talk about Kaladin. My poor baby Kaladin. His father is pissing me off. Like, can we have a good father figure? Please, just one non-toxic father figure. Like, I get that both of them are trying, but they're so self-centered. Like, both Dalinar and Lirin are so self-centered. I just need Adolin and Kaladin to have better father figures. I'm just gonna, okay. My favorite thing about this book so far is Adolin's just like love for Kaladin. Adolin, ooh, it's so sad because Kaladin feels like it's the, almost the end of an era because he's trained his Windrunners. His bridge crew that he built from dirt in book one is basically defunct. People are leaving and people are having their own families and just moving out of like that bridge for bubble that he created. And he feels that end and he's really taking it hard. And also Dalinar, I hate Dalinar. I hate Dalinar for what he did. I know people are going to tell me that it was the smart thing to do, but you know what? I don't want to hear it. Yeah, and I feel like I'm interested to see this part of Kaladin because he just feels like he's regressed. As long as he's happy, I don't care what he does, but I'm just mad that his father got what he wanted because he didn't deserve it. He was a self-centered asshole. So those are my feelings. I hate all the fathers. I want more Yasna. I feel like Yasna just randomly shows up in this book so far in the 300 pages and I just need her to have more of a presence and I want more chapters from the Parshendi because we've had a few chapters from Wenli and it's a very interesting political climate. Like I said, I'm right at the start of part two and I feel like this is where all the storylines are starting to split up. Anyway, I'm interested to see where this book goes. So far I still think Words of Radiance is my favorite novel but I also think that his first half is always a lot slower than his second half so I'm interested to see what happens now that all the storylines have split up and where the story goes from there but yeah that is this update i will see you guys in my next one well Ruth of the Wall is on my tbr so if i don't finish it before the end of the month which is likely going to happen it's gonna <laughs> that's a great system i think you played yourself hi everyone hi hello sorry for the bad lighting but i'm here it's your girl. I finished The Burning God last night. Actually not last night, yesterday. It's been a day. I still have no thoughts. My mind is empty. I just cannot believe the series is over. Okay, so I am going to talk about the ending. I'm not gonna spoil it, but I am. I guess I can't talk about it without hinting in the direction that it goes in. I feel like anyone who's read the first two books knows that it's not gonna be a happy-go-lucky, fun ending. And um, so I'm gonna talk about that. I'm not gonna spoil anything. But if you don't want to know anything about the ending or you don't want to get any hints, I will put a timestamp over here so that you can skip this section and move into my Rhythm 4 thoughts. I think I had the last third left and I feel like things calm down and then shit hit the fan and then things calm down again, give you false security and then shit hit the fan again. And I just really love that. I love not having a set kind of feeling. You know it's gonna end at this huge climax and the book is a slow build up to that. I just love that. You think we're gonna calm down and then it just shoots you in the face and then you expect the book to end but it keeps going and then, oh wait, game over. <laughs> I've heard a lot of criticism about the ending because I don't know, I think people expected this to to be a story with morals or to have I god forbid if people expected this book to have a happy ending because you played yourself my friend this book I don't think ever was planned to have a happy ending because more than anything else it is historical fantasy it is trying to show the futility of war and especially when there are limited players and how one person cannot rise above history and change it and I just really love that I love that this is what that book shows because I feel like history is relentless and you might know something's gonna happen and you might want to change it but then you just end up being a footnote in history that tried but is forgotten by history and I just love that so much. Like I said, I loved the ending a lot. I think this is the only way a book like this could have ended. It almost kind of reminds me of Sword of Kaigen, which if you didn't know is my favorite book of this year, in the way that the pacing is gonna be something that not everyone loves, but I love the pacing in Sword of Kaigen and I love the pacing here because I feel like the, the book ending on a main climactic event has great show value. I'm sure readers will love that. The series going out in a bang because a lot of books do this. A lot of books have the big climactic event and then one chapter with like the characters maybe like an epilogue or the characters finding each other afterwards and just like let's be happy or something like that but that's just not realistic winning power is easy but holding on to power is a lot harder especially when you're not someone that everyone wants to rule especially when you have limited resources especially when you're not a hero Rin is not a hero Kite is not a hero I don't think any of these characters can be called heroes which is what I love and I just think that like I said this is the only way the series could have ended because 
because having those climactic events where someone wins and then that's the way the book ends is just doing a disservice to history i think and i think the only way this book could have ended was the way it did and oh was it a great ending i loved it i'm so excited for anything rf kuang writes in the future because ma'am can write i'm so excited and the way this book casually slipped in a hamilton quote at the end and i was just like yes wow ho oh, yes i just love reading about rin's little slow descent into being a villain but i feel like that started right at the end of book one but in this book there are no limits to what rin will do and i just love reading about her even though she drives me off the roof like she's so annoying she will never learn she will always trust the wrong people and get burnt she'll not listen to anything anyone has to say but again it's so realistic just because rin is not a leader um she finds herself in a position of a leader but she's not good at it she needs a lot of advice from a lot of people to succeed which is why you know that her regime where she's like i'm going to be a god i'm going to rule all of nikon and um you just know that's not going to happen because she's just not in that headspace she's paranoid she thinks with her fists she thinks with her heart not her head even with kite next to her i just think that it was a doomed idea from the start and um rf kong really shows that throughout this book i think those are all my thoughts i think on this book i think uh i think it's neck and neck with the dragon republic as my favorite book in the series it's just such a good conclusion i generally have a soft spot in my heart for this book and i'm really sad i finished it now let's just talk about this behemoth i had hopes and dreams of finishing this book by the end of november but it is the 27th there are three days of this month left i am at the end of part two which is uh page 546 it's not gonna happen y'all i just i am stress incarnate if only i stopped watching youtube videos and started reading that would be great so far my only thought in my head right now is i hate Liren. i hate Kaladin's father so much i just hope he chokes on something and dies that's what i want like Kaladin has gone through so fucking much and this asshole is so entitled because Kaladin had to um if you read the first book whatever but Kaladin really had to adapt to a situation so that he wouldn't die because he was literally at the bottom of the bottom and he didn't know how he was going to survive and you he's really oh, I hate him so much he makes my blood boil to another extent like I don't want him to die because I know that would destroy Kaladin further but this asshole needs to be put in his place I'm just saying so far I don't think I like this as much as the other books like I think this might be my least favorite but also it does take more than halfway for me to really have a thought one single thought about this series <laughs> but I am really close to halfway so I'm excited to keep reading I love that we get a lot more of Novani and um I'm just so surprised because we've still not gotten a single flashback and we're halfway through the book so this book format wise is a lot different from the others what just happened in their stronghold the way i'm trying to <laughs> the way i'm talking to about this book without trying to spoil the first three books but what just happened to their stronghold was so fun the first half of part two was just like slow 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 and i figured this part was going to be one of the slower parts before we get on to more action but the end of this part i'm excited to keep reading i'm just hyped i'm hyped those are my thoughts i think so far i'm really glad that adolin is getting more agency i'm really glad that Adolin isn't blindly worshipping his father anymore because I just think that Dalinar is so condescending and I just think that he puts so much pressure on Adolin without even realizing he's doing it and someone needs to tell that man to back off but again he's barely been in this part I think the backstories are starting in the next part so interesting and Yasna and Renarin I'm really excited for Dalinar not so much but <laughs> the hoe is gonna come home and find find chaos so I'm excited. But yeah, I think part three is going to really pick up. So I'm really excited for that. When does part three end? Can I read part three? Who do I think I am? Can I read part three? What are the odds that I read this chunk of the book before my next update? I think that's what I'm going to try to do. But anyway, I'm excited to keep reading, hopefully soon. Yes. But yeah, that is everything for this update. I will see you guys in the next one. Literally, the sun is going down at this point. Bye. Hello. Hi. It's been longer than I thought it was going to be before I updated i did jokingly say that let me finish part three and then update the next time but yeah i'm way past part three i'm on exactly page 900 which is like a few chapters into part four i wanted to update earlier but i just felt like i didn't really have anything to say about part three i think let me see what perspectives we followed again part three was mostly navani and Rebario. no not Rebario. Rebonio. did i just say Rebario? Rebonio. which i liked i liked navani and Re 
Rebonial. Why do I keep thinking, why do I keep mixing her name with Sabariel? I just feel like all the names are so similar. <laughs> but I just love their relationship, whatever that is, because they're enemies. But I just feel like they're scientists first and then enemies later. I just love how they have different perspectives that they just share with each other and together. They're just like one genius unit. Love that. Love seeing women in STEM thriving. But the thing is that th that's the only thing we got. I'm trying to think of what else happened, but like there were a few Kaladin chapters, there were a few Dalinar chapters. We did get a little more Yasna and I just feel like I love Yasna. I always say we don't get enough Yasna, but like the, the scenes that we get with Yasna are just always some of my favorite scenes in Stormlight. And then the first scene we got with Yasna was just she's so badass. I love her. And then the second one, I'm just confused at where her character is going because the scene I just feel like almost parallels her to Dalinar and I just don't want that for her. I think she's so unique and I just don't think I understand the reasoning behind wanting to fit in, wanting to understand and wanting to be able to do all the things that all the kings before her did but I just feel like the title can change with her. The same way I feel like in the first three books Dalinar changed pretty much everything about his title and the hierarchy of the high princes and everything and I just don't think that just because Yasna is a woman she has to conform. There was this one scene which is basically just a parallel to Dalinar and his war, rage, lust thing and I just I, I didn't like it. Yeah so like part three like I said it's not my favorite but there's always one part or sometimes even two parts I think in Brandon Sanderson's books that are lagging, which I guess on hindsight in a 1000 plus page book, having one section that is just more backstory and setup makes sense. But one thing I did like about part three is that we finally started getting flashbacks, which we haven't been getting for almost half the book. But I do really like Venli and Eshenai's past because we get one side of what happened and what started the war between the Parshendi and the Alethi. But now we get the other side of the story and we get to see more into Parshendi culture and how humans and Parshendi came across each other. And I just really like it. Venli is one of the most interesting characters to follow now but back then I remember how insufferable she was and I always just really really liked Esh and I so I'm really glad we're getting backstories with both of them. Relaine, I just want more Relaine because like since book one I just have been so interested in Relaine's storyline and I feel like he's such an interesting parallel to Kaladin. I just want more Relaine and I feel like we're finally gonna get more now. Part four has already picked up. I'm really interested that we're finally getting a look into Shadesmar and how weird it is. I'm enjoying that. So yeah I think that's about everything. I'm excited to see how everything picks up. It's the last day of the month, aka the day I thought I would have finished Rhythm of War, but I'm flying through it. I read 150 pages yesterday, which is like unheard of for me because I'm not a slow reader, but I also don't binge. But yeah, I'm trying to get this vlog up by Thursday, so we will see. I'm enjoying myself the way I enjoy all friend Sanderson's work, but I still don't think this is my favorite out of all of them. That is everything. I will see you guys in my next clip. That's it. Bye. I'm sorry the last clip I'm filming has me looking like an actual mess, but um, 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 I had a final at 10 a.m. this morning. I have an essay due tonight. I have not slept in a while. This is my descent into madness, but within the chaos of my life, I did finish Rhythm of War. So I feel like the last time I talked to you, I've edited my vlog up till here um, because it's coming up tomorrow. And I just feel like I'm having trouble <laughs> getting my thoughts in. I, I finished it like maybe 10 minutes minutes ago. I'm having trouble getting all my thoughts in order just because it just occurs to me that I haven't talked to you since part three and since then my thoughts about this book have changed so drastically because part three four and part five were just everything. Everything picked up. All the perspectives that I wanted were the ones we were getting. We were getting beautiful moments with all the characters that I loved. I, I ended up giving this 4.5 stars, which I've never given one of the Stormlight books less than a full five star. But I just think that I didn't have that certainty that this book is like a five star book that I did with the first three. I also think it's to do with the fact that I read the first three books in like maybe three weeks straight, like back to back to back. And I was in that almost like a craze. But since since then, I haven't been thinking about the series so much. I've kind of moved past. This basically introduced me to SFF, an adult fantasy. And since then, I've read a lot more. So I think that might be the why I'm just not... Like, I don't think this is the best thing that's ever been written. And that just makes me curious to reread books one, two, and three to see if I still feel that way because even in the six months since I've read the first three books, I've just changed a lot as a reader. That being said, I'm so shocked at some of the things this book did. Some of the things break my heart. I, I don't know how to talk about this without <laughs> spoiling, but part four and part five basically just did not disappoint. I just wrote a Goodreads review, but I'm still like, literally, my, my mind is completely blank. So like, why did I decide to film this right now? Part 
part four what was what happened in part four so many things happened okay first of all i loved Adolin's story and the way it ended and not well not and ended makes it sound very final but like the way his arc in this book ended he is not my favorite character but there's this inherent goodness in him that a lot of people thought would um that rhythm of war would be his villain origin story which honestly i don't mind but i do love the way his story went shalan i feel a great sense of loss <laughs> Um, Shalon, I knew that this was the direction Shalon's story was going to take and then the climax moment I knew was going to happen with each scene that led up to that in part four I was like oh no it's coming it's coming but like that doesn't mean that I wasn't holding my breath to see what was gonna happen and that scene hurt me and then the scene right after hurt me okay my favorite scene ever I've said it a million times that Wit is my favorite character Wit and Kaladin so Wit and Kaladin together yeah that's like ideal pair just which showing up in all these books like in oathbringer and in rhythm of war and just being like let me tell you a story it's like one of my favorite things chapter 80 was just so stunning and then chapter 108 was just so devastating and like Kaladin. if you can see this my tabs on the top of my book are just scenes that i want to get back to without having to search through like this sea of tabs so you can tell there's quite a few in the first half and then almost 300 pages in the middle there's nothing like nothing i want to tab nothing i want to get back to and then then part four and part five are just like so many like literally it goes this way and then comes back that that's a lot of time that's a lot more than the first few parts like part four and part five might just be some of my favorite parts of a stormlight book like i loved it so much i love oh, navani navani is just oh, i'm so every time like every time i got to a navani chapter i was like i'm gonna get bored with all the science but yes thank god it's a navani chapter i'm so glad and navani and rabonio like that relationship and i just love how we got to focus more on this bren in this one as well because i just love how brandon sanderson makes people question things that they've always considered to be one way he did that with the parchment he did that with spren i just love how we, even though this is like book four in like a huge series we're still getting to learn more with every book chapter 93 and chapter 94 that little section oh, maya i love maya I, I i was waiting for maya to do something and i was just like yes maya and when shalan finally does what she does and then that thing after that happens and then i cried even though it's what shalan needs it's <laughs> i'm being so cryptic cryptic get it but i just don't want to spoil anyone i actually did love fenley's story in this as well as i mentioned before in the flashback she was just not my favorite character but again she's not supposed to be likable but she's also just an embodiment of all the selfish feelings that someone has unlike the way everyone tamps it down she actually just let it be and i think that's a very interesting character study especially now she's so different and following her was just so interesting i realized that i spent half this vlog talking about Liren. i'm so sorry <laughs> I am so intrigued about Moash's character. What is he what is he called now? Wire? I'm just so interested. I shouldn't be. It's like when you see like a candle and you're just like, I shouldn't touch this flame. It's bad for me. And then you touch it anyway, right? Like that's that's how I feel about Wire or Moash, whatever. And I'm just so intrigued. I feel like this is the biggest cliffhanger that the series has ended off on. Like I feel like book one, two, and three had like pretty consistent endings. Like obviously there were like hints of what would happen in the next book, but this one I feel like like with the thing that Dalinar does at the end I just feel like maybe maybe it's just because I have to wait three years for this book and with other books the longest I had to wait was six months I just feel like I don't know it feels like a cliffhanger I'm very interested about the ghost bloods because someone told me who the leader of the ghost bloods is and um I'm shook I need to know I need to I, he needs to play a bigger part in book five because I'm very very interested what was that epilogue I'm so concerned I love that the epilogue is always with but like I'm so concerned about what's going on like someone please explain to me because I don't know but yeah that is 10 minutes of me going on and on about rhythm of war but anyway that is it for this update that is it for this vlog so thank you so much if you made it to the end and especially if you haven't read the books that that would be a really nice thing that you did <laughs> even though I really tried to keep this spoiler free let me know if these books if you read them is there on your TBR that is all I have for this video thank you so much for watching all my links will be down below as well as the subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video Goodbye.